Fifth grade Go Math, Chapter 4, Lesson 2, Essential Question. How can you use a model to multiply a whole number and a decimal? For this lesson, you also need two colored pencils in addition to your regular pencil. Investigate. Now, up here in materials, it says decimal models. We're just going to use the square that they have down here. So, giant tortoises move very slowly. They can travel a distance of about 17 hundredths of a mile in one hour. If it travels at the same speed, how far could a giant tortoise move in four hours? Squiggle underline what you're being asked to find, circle the important information, and underline any keywords to help you know which operation we are going to be performing. So you should have squiggle underlined how far can a giant tortoise move in four hours, circled four hours, and then 17 hundredths of a mile in one hour, and then a clue word is same speed. When we're working with the same numbers, um, it's either going to be multiplication or division, and in this case we are repeating the same number um, in addition to, so we are going to be multiplying. Part A. Complete the statement to describe the problem. I need to find how many total miles are in blank groups of blank. So we need to know how many total miles there are in groups. In this case, the groups are hours. So how many total miles in four groups of, and how far can the tortoise travel in one hour? 17 hundredths, okay? So how would we write an expression to represent that? We would go 4 times 17 hundredths. Okay, so now we're going to use the decimal model to find this out. Um, so what does, before we do that, we need to know what does each small square in the decimal model represent? Each of these little squares. There's a hundred of them in there, so these all represent a hundredth and that's, remember, with a th, okay? Now, because we have our model here, the first thing that we do is we need to shade a group of, our groups are what? How far can the tortoise travel in one hour? 17 hundredths. So take your first color and shade in 17 of the little squares, 17 hundredths. <laughs> So there's my first group, and if you left the three at the bottom down here and colored those, that's okay, as long as it's 17 hundredths. So now we're going to use a different color to shade each additional group of 17 hundredths until we have four groups of 17 squares each. Now when you're shading them, it's easiest, um, in my opinion, if you do it vertically because I know that straight up and down that's a group of 10 and then I only needed seven more. So my next group I'm going to do these three and then 10 and know that's 13 and then I'll do four more to make it a total of 17. Use your two colors and alternate them. I will be using four different colors just so that you can see that I have four groups. Um, so press pause and shade in your three more groups of 17 hundredths. So your model should look something similar to mine. So now part E is to record the total number of squares shaded. Um, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six rows of ten, and how many extra? Well, there's two not here, so that's eight. So we have 68 squares that are shaded, so the giant tortoise can move 68 hundredths of a mile in four hours. So drawing conclusions, number one, explain why you use only one decimal model to show the product. Why did we only have to use one whole um, square? Why did we not have to use two of them? See if you can finish this sentence. We only used one because the product was blank. 
was less than one whole number. If it, the answer had been one or more, we would have needed to use two or more models. So number two, explain how the product of four groups of 17 hundredths is similar to the product of four groups of just 17. And then how is it different? So we have how is it similar and then how is it different? The first thing I would do is maybe show your multiplication of 4 times 17 so that you can see how they're similar. So see if you can fill in these sentence frames. They are similar because blank and they are different because blank. And then I worked out 17 times 4 right there. So they are similar because they use the same digits the 6 and the 8, and then they are different because the decimal point is in a different place for each of them. Because in 68, the decimal point is right here after the 8, and then it, with multiplying by 17 hundredths, the decimal point is before the 6. Number 3, compare the product of 17 hundredths and 4 with each of the factors. Which number has the greatest value? Let's go that far. So the product was the 68 hundredths. And comparing that to the 17 hundredths and the 4, which one has the greatest value? The 4 is the greatest. And now they want to know, so when we multiply, how is it different than when multiplying two whole numbers? So like up here we did 17 times 4. This was just 68. So in this case, the answer is the greatest, um, and that's the difference, is that multiplying whole numbers, your answer is greater, while as in multiplying um, one decimal times a whole number, one of the factors is the greatest. And so I wrote simply, when multiplying whole numbers, the product has the greatest value. Make connections. You can draw a quick picture to solve decimal multiplication problems. Remember, quick pictures are just the quick sketch of a whole, a tenth, and a hundredth. So, now it says, find the product 3 times 46 hundredths. Step 1, draw 3 groups of 4 tenths and 6 hundredths. So, that's where that comes in. So, draw that. Maybe draw one group here, one group here, and one group here. So, stack them vertically. And so here's my three groups. I have one group and four, and then I group my hundredths in a group of five with the one extra for six. So there's my three groups. Step two is to combine the hundredths and rename. So just like you normally would, you're combining groups of ten and combining them. So we have, there are how many hundredths? There was five, ten, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, there were 18 hundredths, so we named 10 of them as 1 tenth. And so that's why I crossed out 10 and I drew in another tenth here. 3 is to combine the tenths. So how many tenths do we have? And then are we regrouping to get a square as a whole? Um, do that and then we'll fill this in. So I found that there were 13 tenths and I needed to rename 10 tenths as one whole, and so that's why I crossed out 10 of them, and then I drew in my whole. Now we need to record what um, we have left. We have one whole, and then the decimal point, with three tenths left over, and with five, six, seven, eight hundredths left over. Now before we move on to the share and show, the math talk says explain how renaming uh, decimals is like renaming whole numbers. Um, that's we're regrouping the exact same way, groups of 10. And then also, look right here, um, if you multiply just whole numbers, uh, the digits are the same, the decimal place is just in a different spot. For the Sharon show, on numbers 1, 2, and 3, you need to color in the models. Um, Number one, they've already done the coloring for you, so you need to find the answer. And then four, five, six, and seven, 
it says draw a quick picture. So even if it's not your favorite method of solving, you need to attempt the quick picture. Um, you just draw your decimal amount that many times. So for six, that's six or six tenths, I would draw one, two, three, four, five, six, four times, four groups of six tenths, and then regroup as needed. So press pause and work on your share and show. So for number one, again, they did the coloring for you. And so that's three rows of ten, which makes it three tenths. Um, but since the answer is in hundredths, I'm going to write it as thirty hundredths. So we have the same number of decimal places in our answer. For number two, for number two, you should have done two groups of thirty-eight hundredths. And so that means that we have six full, seven full tenths, and then six left over. So our answer is 76 hundredths. And on number three, it should be colored in like, like this. And we filled up almost the whole thing. And so there are nine tenths, nine rows. And if there's only four left uncolored here, so there's six. So 96 hundredths is the answer to three. On number four, I told you four groups of six tenths. Draw a quick picture. And then you need to regroup those. So draw, uh, draw your circles as you need. I ended up with two holes and four tenths left over. Number five should be two groups of 67 hundredths, so six tenths and seven hundredths. And then you need to regroup your hundredths and your tenths as needed. If you regrouped correctly, you should have ended up with the answer of one whole and 34 hundredths. And number six, three groups of 62 hundredths, so three groups of six tenths and two hundredths. Regrouping as needed, you should end up with one and five, six, seven, eight tenths and six hundred, so one and eighty-six hundredths, and then seven is four groups of thirty-two hundredths, which should be one and twenty-eight hundredths. So number eight, describe how you solved exercise seven using place value and, you name, and renaming. So basically they're asking you to describe what you did in exercise seven with your quick drawing. Using this sentence frame, I did not need to regroup my blank, but I did regroup blank tenths as blank whole. Fill in the missing blanks to explain how you use place value and renaming. So it should say I did not need to regroup my hundredths, but I did regroup ten tenths as one whole. And if you had wrote your own sentence that basically says the same thing, you're good to go. And please excuse the cameo of my daughter in the background of parts of this video.